What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus package update and daily news report for Friday, March 4th. We have a lot of new reports that have recently come out, so we are going to discuss those in today's video. First, we are going to discuss the jobs report. Then we'll go into discussing what Senator Joe Manchin is trying to do and trying to get past. This is getting some support from Democrats and it's also getting some pushback. We also got uh, news that uh, one state has approved $600 stimulus checks. We got good news coming out of the CDC. And then we also got some bad news coming out of Russia and Ukraine as well. So we will get to that at the end of today's video. First off, if you enjoy these daily uploads, can you do me a favor? Go ahead and hit that like button. But let's get right into it. First, the February jobs report was released this morning by the Labor Department. We are now sitting at 3.8% unemployment. This is good. This means that jobs are slowly coming back. This is really, really good because instead of jobs just all of a sudden just showing up, they're slowly coming back. And this is better than all of the jobs just becoming available or all the jobs now are taken. Okay, two big swings. That's not what we want. We also saw payrolls rise by 600 and 78,000 jobs for February. This was estimated to be at 423,000, so a major jump. But here's where things get interesting. We saw hourly earnings, okay? Hourly earnings on average from year over year rose by 5.1%. That's really good. We're seeing wages go up. With inflation, obviously wages need to go up. But here's where things are really interesting. Month over month, wages were unchanged. They didn't go up, they didn't go down. This is actually a good thing, and I wanna explain why. According to experts, this proves that wages have already received uh, the increases that they needed to get. And we could see the peak of the wage price spiral. I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. If we continue to see wages go up, slowly go up over time, the problem is if wages go up and they go up too high, that usually means that prices will trickle up for products. And as prices trickle up for products and wages don't move for a while, what happens is the wages start to trickle up and follow. And so we just keep getting this wage price spiral. But also keep this in mind, because even though this is considered really good news, Here's the problem, that right now, more than 50% of the wage increases have come to the lowest income earners. This is big, okay? This is really big because this is both good and bad news. The good news is lower income earners, in most cases, deserve to make more money, and that's good. They're getting paid more. Here's the bad news. Wage increases for the higher income earners might not have been priced in yet. And if this is the case, then not only are we seeing this wage price spiral slowly go up, if we start to see executives and the higher income earners start getting their pay bumps and their bonuses and their raises, what happens then? We could see the wage price spiral, instead of going slowly and trickling up, we could see it just jump because of wages and then the price of the products jump to follow and that could create a major disaster. So. That's something that we'll, we will need to look into, and that's something that we will pretty much have to wait you know, till next month to see the, the, the March jobs report, but then also wait till the end of April as well to see that report. So we still got a little bit of time. But here's something I thought was interesting as well, is that recently the, in the White House statements, the White House hasn't been concerned with with jobs recently, yeah, they brought it up here and there, but the White House has been most concerned about inflation and seeing that the American people receive some form of relief for rising costs. And this is a great thing that the White House is looking after us. The problem is not much is getting done. But here's the crazy thing that currently, if you look back at the, the graphs from 2019-20, right, and see where our where our workforce participation was at, about 63%. And you look to see where it is today, about 60 to 61%. This means we've lost 
about two to three percent of our workforce. That means they're not coming back. Here's the problem. The White House doesn't really discuss this. We don't see a lot of reports on this, but that's an issue if two to three percent of our workforce is never coming back. That's a problem because who is going to fill those positions? Nobody. There's really nobody that's going to fill them. That's an issue. Now, what we are hearing out of the White House recently actually has to do with Senator Joe Manchin's uh, talk of a smaller Build Back Better Act or I guess what many are now calling the Building a Better America plan. But according to House Democrats, they say that they have been working to put together a bill that would mainly reduce the national deficit. That's exactly what Senator Joe Manchin wants. And they say from there, they want to get support from Senator Joe Manchin and then move forward by including social issues, climate change, and any other provisions that Senator Joe Manchin may accept. But this is where we could have a problem. And I want to explain why. Many lawmakers have come to the conclusion that Senator Joe Manchin is the final piece to this puzzle. But the struggle is what happens in a week, in six days on uh, March 10th, we will get the new CPI reading. But here's where it could turn into an issue. The struggle is what happens if the CPI reading comes out worse than expected, or even better than expected. If CPI comes out next week and it shows inflation is, is going up, inflation is higher than 7.5%, will Joe Manchin even support any bill? We don't know. He hasn't stated anything yet. Or let's go to the flip side of that. What if the CPI reading comes back? It's better than expected. You know, CPI, the inflation is less than 7.5%. Would progressives then push to see more as they could see this as a sign as in inflation is transitory? I don't know. And that's what's, that's what's tough to try to determine which direction we're going to go. But the truth is that no matter what bill we get, it's not going to matter what the House of Representatives pass. It's not going to matter there. It doesn't matter what the House Democrats want. It's what senators want. That's the real issue. And it really comes down to one person, Senator Joe Manchin. That's it. So that's the issue right now is that even though House Democrats have been working to try to get this, this big you know, Build Back Better Act or you know, Building a Better America bill, it, it doesn't matter. It just matters what comes out of the Senate. And as of right now, the Senate isn't too worried about trying to pass an additional bill because they got so many other things that they got to worry about. Right? They're, they're worrying about Ukraine. They have to worry about a, a new Supreme Court justice. Right? You got to worry about you know, so many other things. They got other bills that they're trying to work on as well. The competitiveness bill. Right? They have that a new uh, cybersecurity bill that they passed this week, which some say that it, uh, it lacked certain, uh, certain things and so had major flaws. So they might have to go back and, and rework that. So we'll see. But just recently, Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts had this to say. She said, we have to have 50 votes. There's no way around the math. And she also went on stated that she believes every Senate Democrat backed universal pre-K, in-home and community-based care for seniors and the elderly, and establishing a 15% minimum tax on corporations. That's what she said. Now, even though some Democrats are really frustrated with Senator Joe Manchin at this time over his, his scaled back plan, that it, it was scaled back on, on, his own, on his own time. He's the one that scaled it back. Not that Republicans said, no, 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 we're not going to pass that. Republicans don't have a say in this because this would actually be passed through a budget reconciliation. And Democrats say that they haven't pushed Senator Joe Manchin to try to reduce it, try to scale it back. That was never an ask. So others say that no matter what is on the table, it needs to be passed and it needs to be passed now. This is due to the fact that Democrats believe that if a bill isn't passed soon, that their chances of remaining in control in the House and the Senate will truly be in jeopardy. So we'll see. But let's talk about gas prices for a moment because I have seen and I asked you guys this the other day and I want to touch on this because I told you 
that over the, over the past couple days, I saw gas prices rise fairly quickly. Now, currently, as of today, according to AAA, they are saying that gas prices are at $3.83 a gallon. This is nationally. On Monday, just four days ago, I did a video on this as well, that gas prices were just $3.61 a gallon. Since last year, just to give you an idea, gas was $2.65 a gallon. Now, why is this so important? Gas prices have gone up nationally, 22 cents a gallon in just four days. Okay, let that sink in. 22 cents a gallon in four days. That kind of run, according to experts, if we were to see this, okay, and we push this out until, let's say a month, until April 1st, gas prices, if they go up 22 cents every four days, gas prices nationally for a gallon of gas would be $5.37. How insane is that, right? How insane is that? But here's where things get very scary. We are uh, from, uh, from multiple sources. They say historically, gas prices rise between 25 cents and 75 cents a gallon between March and May 30th, which is Memorial Day. So if you factor that into the equation as well, and some predict we could see gas prices topping $6 a gallon within three months, okay? But keep this in mind, if gas prices go up 22 cents in just four days, that would put it at $5.37. But that only gets us to April 1st. We would still have to go an additional two months at uh, 22 cents a gallon for every four days. So that right there would take us, I believe, closer to $10 a gallon nationally. And this is what many experts worried about. When you factor all these different things in, it becomes a big issue. But the issues could get worse. Let, let me just break this down. What we are hearing is that experts say and experts worry that these prices are based off of current events, current supply. But what happens if the US and other NATO allies sanction Russian oil? What happens then? Reports indicate that these sanctions, they have been discussed, but that this would really hurt the American people and Europeans. So they want to hold off on this. They don't want to do this. But just consider that if we sanction Russian oil, nobody buys it. That reduces our supply. We get about 10% of our oil from Russia. Now we can't just go and add 10% to the price. It doesn't really work like that. The math is a little bit more complicated, but I think you get the idea, right? Supply and demand principles kick in. If supply decreases, but demand stays the same, the prices will have to go up, okay? So it's not great news, but just understand, prices for gas will go up. As prices of gas goes up, prices of products goes up, food goes up, everything will go up because it just follows gas. So keep that in mind. Now. Let's get away from some of the bad news for, for a moment. Let's go talk about some good news. If you live in Oregon, lawmakers have approved the $600 stimulus payments for lower income workers in the state. So the Oregon Department of Revenue stated that roughly 245,000 people in Oregon are gonna be eligible for these payments. And you will be limited to one payment per household. So even though you and maybe a family member are both lower income, it doesn't mean, and you live in the same house, doesn't mean you both get one of these $600 stimulus checks. It's one per household, okay? We also know that the CDC uh, data released yesterday shows that 90% of the United States actually falls into the category of being able to remove their mask. Uh, we do know some states uh, still have a mask mandate in place, but most are expected to either, uh, their, their mask mandates to either expire or they will simply fall within the next couple of months. So got some good news there. Now let's get into the Russia Ukraine news as well. Russia is reportedly attacking communication infrastructure uh, as we speak, as it's attempting to cut off the flow of information to Ukraine. Currently, 
We know that the U.S. is sharing intel with uh, about Russian force movements and locations with Ukraine, and this is part of the issue. So according to one of the reports I read today, this could be one of the reasons why uh, troops are just sitting out of Kyiv, because they are waiting. They're waiting so that communications will fall, and then it would make it easier to cap or potentially capture uh, the Ukrainian president uh, uh, Zelensky, but also take over Kyiv. So we'll see what happens there. Um, we, we did learn today that Russian troops have actually seized the site of a nuclear plant as well, and this is Europe's largest nuclear power plant. So there's a little bit of concern there, okay? More than a little bit. Uh, a lot of people are extremely concerned about what's gonna go on there. So we'll see what happens, but that is what we know as of right now. As always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share all latest news and updates. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. Again, if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, go ahead, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.